Kyle Harrison has basically been outside of Luciano, the prized possession of all the Farhan drafts and maybe even more so than Luciano because Luciano was signed with the prior regime, even though he was developed the last five plus years under the Farhan regime. Now that you've seen Harrison and there was a lot of hype and I bought into it um, and there's been some good and there's been some in, he's 22 years old. How would you, how would you, how would you categorize him thus far? Has, has he solid? Has he meet, has he met any of the hype that was attached to him? Well, it depends who was hyping him. So (laughs) I heard a lot of hype and Look, as fans, I, I know I, as I fans, we can overhype prospects all day long. That's what we do with our own players. We overhype them. We overhype. We hype our players. We live in our bubble, and that's what we do. I thought we were getting, you know, Carlos Rodon 2.0. I thought we were getting a dude who's going to be striking at least 80 game. Just swing and miss stuff, blowing through dudes, box office, paparazzi, cameras flashing all over the place. I thought we were getting the next great Giants pitcher. Well, baseball- I, he could still be that. He could still be that. He's only through half a season. But the hype that he received, I don't think it's been met yet. Now, now to be fair, America, uh, America, or whatever, baseball prospectus, uh, the Bleacher Report, uh, the Athletic, all the various sites that rank prospects, Independent. That's where all these numbers come from and all these rankings and everything. They had him, all of them, almost unanimously had him as the number one left-handed prospect in baseball for yeah. multiple years. Yeah. So it's not just because uh, I, I, just I, I, I bought yeah. into the hype. I'm reading all about it, and there would you'd see videos of him striking out guys left and right, and you're like, wow, what's this going to look like at the bigs and everything? And um, I don't think it's fall flat at all. Is it like... Paul Skeens level, not even close. Paul Skeens, younger and number one overall pick, has like, wow. Like, he feels box office to me. And we'll see if that's sustainable. But he feels well, like everything you're asking for that you thought, that feels like Paul Skeens. Now, is that unfair of Harrison? Harrison was pretty highly touted, dude. Like, pretty highly touted. And they've gone about it in completely different ways. One guy went to LSU and threw, I, I believe, 350 or 60 innings in in just three years at LSU. The other guy went the minor league route, and I don't think he even sniffed that ma- that many innings. And one guy looks like a finished product or close to it, and the other guy looks like he's really a, a work in progress. Now, that just may be a byproduct of having various stuff. One guy blows velo. The other guy's more of a finesse guy with the, with the fastball. I don't know, man. Like, I think it's been a mixed bag with Harrison is what I'm saying. Um, Resiliency, I like it. I don't think there's been a mixed bag. It's just our expectations probably were too high considering he never went deep into games in AAA. Maybe we should have just lowered the bar, said, okay, it's going to be raw. It's not going to work deep in the game because of what happened at AAA in the innings he pitched last year. He's about to – he pitched 111 innings last year. 34 at the Giants – uh, 77 with the with the double-A AA, triple-A teams. So we're at 77 innings pitch right now. What's going to happen when he gets to 111, 120? Is it going to wear it out? Why wasn't he stretched out in the minors? Why wasn't he going deep in the games? Why was he only going three to four innings? I Maybe maybe the expectations for him coming into this season said, hey, he didn't pitch deep in the games in triple-A, so don't expect him to do the same thing in the major leagues. So bullpen be on high alert whenever Kyle Harrison starts. But overall, I mean, he's having a solid rookie season. He's four. No, three, he has been solid. Three point nine six ERA. Um, he's starting to get the ground balls. Starting to pitch to contact, which I didn't expect. Um, I didn't expect him to pitch to contact. I thought he was going to be a flamethrower, striking out. From what all the reports well, said, I mean, from what everybody told me about the young man. But yesterday, seventy seven innings, seventy seven pitches, and back to back starts, back to back starts where he's got at least six innings. All right. Now, last week in Arizona, it was a little. Herky jerky, right? You give up the eight yeah. hits, you give up three runs, but he didn't walk anybody. That's two straight starts. Hell, in his last three appearances, he's only walked one batter. The guy's getting better. So you're not walking guys, you're not giving people free free passes, but can you limit the walks? I mean, excuse me, can you limit the hits and can you limit the runs? Yesterday he did that. Limited the hits, only four hits, gave up only one run, he got the ground balls that he needed, struck out three. Gave the Giants a chance to win a baseball game. He considers himself a fly ball pitcher, which is interesting because he likes to like work up in the zone, right? And 
Yesterday, he was asked by Evan Giddings in the post game about his velocity and how much he had left, and it sounded like he was leaving it all out there, meaning he was going to try to throw harder, whereas in the handful of starts prior to that, it felt like he he admitted that he was trying to hold back a little so that he could preserve himself and go deeper into the game or whatever, and yesterday, he was more efficient because he was attacking people. He went deeper into the game. And he left it all out there. So I, I think that, to me, is more of the template that he needs to utilize moving forward. Yeah, Kyle Harrison, uh, Yaz had a good game yesterday uh, with the triple to give the Giants a one nothing lead. Um, the bullpen was solid yesterday. Top of the 10th was a little hairy, no doubt about that. Great bump by Jose Altuve. You get the runner at second base. It's almost automatic when they score, but you get the win. You win four or five. But how did Kyle Harrison look? The Giants fans out there, 888-957-9570 is a number. Uh, Steve in Santa Rosa. Steve, what's happening? What's going on, Steve? Hey, what's happening? Uh, yeah, I was at the game last night. I haven't been to a game since Hunter Pence was on Philly, and it was great. And Kyle Harrison looked really good to me. He uh, had those guys baffled most of the game. I watched. They they were Some of the guys were swinging and missing they were so far behind the pitch it was crazy but the real problem that i'm seeing and this is not just last night's game uh the guy that plays third base needs a little more uh defensive practice can't catch a routine ground ball can't catch throws from the outfield it's ridiculous and he's not the only one i mean they're making so many little league errors misjudging fly balls Horrible relays, errors, you know, the catchers missing, you know, uh, uh, a fastball on, you know, that gets away from the catcher. Come on. You can't win at a high level when you got a defense like that. So I think uh, we're all right with that pitcher, that's for sure, in my book. And I think uh, a little more defensive practice is in order. I think that's a good point. So, like, <laughs> to start the game, Casey Schmidt boots one. Now, you look at the box, you're like, well, Joe, they only had one error. Now, they're one of the worst teams in terms of fielding and, and the amount of errors that they have. Shortstop. Okay, Brett Wisey made a couple of plays. But on the relay, to to throw out Jordan Alvarez, who's not the fastest runner, but he was booking, you had him. And you threw an errant throw. Casey Schmidt can't dig it out. I think he was still going to be safe, but regardless, Schmidt's got to dig that out. But it, it's not the greatest throw from Brett Wisely. What about Tyra Estrada? Well, that's I'm getting to. It. I'm going. Everyone around the diamond made an error in my estimation. Bailey threw that guy out at second base. Estrada's got to catch that ball. Yeah. I mean, and, and I know the guy's bearing down on you. You're straddling the bag. You, you got to slap that tag on his face, and you got to get him out. And then Wilmer Flores, like at first base. You got to stretch a little on that play. I think they get out of that. So every guy on the infield made a boo boo yesterday. You got a guy Trenton Brooks playing first base. I don't know how much longer they can let him go out there. Well, you, know, you may need to trade for first base. When I mean, we've talked about that ad nauseum, but you know, Lubman. But during the break, we were talking. He's like, you know, what about Kyle Harrison, the long term prospects? And you know what? I'm 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 kind of tired of talking trade right now. Because I don't know who's going to be buying. I don't know who's going to be selling. Because everybody's in a damn race because of the third wild card. It kind of ticks me off. Like, you just give it participation trophies, and I get it. You could go to the World Series as a wild card and maybe make a run for it. And let the Giants get in. Maybe you get Blake Snell rolling here. And I know that's a lot of people don't want to hear that. But you get Blake Snell and local web as your one-two. Maybe you could do some damage here. But right now, I'm just in wait and see mode with this team. I just want to see how it plays out. Who's a player? Is Ramos really a player? Is Slater and guys going to be around here? Is Matos going to be back up? Are we ever going to see Luciano again? <laughs> is Jorge Soler going to turn it around? Where's Michael Conforto at? Is he going to get hot? Pitching-wise, what's going to happen to Hicks and Harrison? If they get to, say, 120 innings, what do you do there? Did you taper off of them? Do you let them say, hey, just go ahead and pitch? We don't care if your arm falls off? Because these guys have never pitched... Kyle Harrison, his next two starts, if he goes at least five, he's going to eclipse his career high in innings pitch for a season. So where are we going to – that's why I'm, I'm just – forget the trades for now. Forget Vlad Jr., forget Pete Alonzo. We all know we want those players. That's already baked in. You know that. We don't need to repeat ourselves. But I just want to see how it plays out here. When you got the Astros and Angels to finish up this homestead, you get the Cubs and the Cardinals next week on the road, then you get the Cubs and the Dodgers back here at home going into July. 
Where is this team going to be at July 2nd going to Atlanta? Am I going to be able to find a player that could staple and say, okay, I got a long-term fixture here in the outfield? I, I just, I, so, I just so got to kind of, we're kind of in wait and see mode with this baseball team right now. How much data do we need for Ramos, you think? As Are a fan base, as an observer, Bonte, what, what do you need? I need to see another month or two. Okay. I need to see another month or two. Three weeks. We saw Luis Matos win NL Player of the Week, and we thought he, oh, he arrived. <laughs> he arrived all right. He arrived to the trade station in Phoenix, Arizona, back to Sacramento. That's where he's at right now. So Ramos is, I I, I got to see more. I don't know if it's a flash in the pen. Now, I'm, I'm with this 6-5 voting Cindy Mobile text line. Being a third wild card team has to win the trade deadline. Every team just postures. The good GMs don't wait for the deadline to make a move. Now, should Farha make a move right now? Maybe. But that's the problem with the third wild card is everybody feels like they're in it. Hey, it's interesting, like, uh, you know, talking about making a move and this, that, and the other. Like, there was a point in time, and I know we were we were deprived of our own homegrown pitching at that time, but I remember when Matt Cain came up, it was like, no way can you trade Matt Cain. Like, no way. Like, it was, like, unthinkable. I wonder where Giants fans are with Harrison. Like, a local guy, homegrown, we're all rooting for him. I, I'm not even here saying, you know, trade him away, but, like, yeah. if he was the sticking point to to get a difference maker in the lineup every single day, is he on that untradeable list, you think, for, for the majority of fans? Mm, I don't know. I don't know how fans feel. Do you remember that feeling about, about Kane? No, like I remember Kane came about up? Kane, Lichica, because it's where the Giants were at. You also got to think about where they were at at the time. They were not close to winning anything. We're just trying to move on past Barry Bonds and figure out what the transition was. But it's not like they're close to really winning anything but, now. But, guys, but no, Giants fans will say, hey, we're tied for the wild card. And the payroll, the payroll, what you did in the offseason, tells me that you are trying to win now. Yeah, but the You're payroll, in a different city. Mentally, but the we're in a different spot. A little, it's like, it's like yeah, kind of but, like a false where, dichotomy. But where the Giants were, they were not even close. Not even close. Now, Giant fan wakes up this morning, they could screech out the standings and say, look, if the playoffs started today, we're in it. That's what Giants fans are saying right now. Really quick, you, you mentioned you know, Matt Cain, where fans are with that. I don't recall Matt Cain ever being a part of trade rumors, but you ever. guys remember after 2007, Tim Lincecum and Alex Rios was the hot trade rumor, that winner you know, in this fan base. And I remember fans were up in arms that that trade was even being discussed. And that was after Linscombe's rookie season where he posted a four ERA and the Giants finished in you know in, in last place in the division. And at that time, fans were like, no, you cannot let Linscombe or Kane go. So that's where fans were there. I don't know if that same, you know, energy is still there. Right I now agree with Harrison, you. Though. I don't think it is. And and I'd, I don't think it's a knock on Harrison. I think it's more. Uh, it's, so it's, Kane it's, came up what? 06, right? Oh, oh, five, 05 at the end. 06. And then at 06, yes. So 06, the Giants were 76 and 85. <laughs> they went one and nine in the last 10 games. They're not a good baseball team. No, I mean, they're, 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 they were about they're, what they are this year. Right. But, I, but the expectations for this year. I don't think there was expectations for the 06 team. I mean, but okay. What were the ex what, expectations what, 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 what for 06? Like, but if they had multiple wild what? card spots, like they only had one back then. Right. If you had multiple ones, wouldn't the expectations have been lowered a little and they would have been I, like, oh, I, just they, go for the wild card. Expected, they had no expectations, though, in 06, 05, from what I remember. I, I, I don't think there was I, any expectations. I think we were still clinging to, you know, maybe we can get in. We've got Barry, even I, though he I, was out I, for the majority I mean, of that, I believe, the 05 season. That team was awful. That team was awful. You get tickets for five dollars, like we were talking about yesterday. I think the expectations for this team, but for who, what, who thought they were a contender? Well, listen to the, what the owners is telling you. Well, the owner could say the whatever mandatory. they want. What is Sarhan saying? Yeah, but they, they, stakes are high, right? What is Flipping saying? Bare minimum is the playoffs. Their offseason actions told you they were trying to do something major. Yeah, but in 05, let's go back to 05. Like. I believe that was the year that you got Matt Morris and Mike Matheny. Like those are veteran pieces you're trying to add to a team to, you know, make a playoff push. Like I, I don't think they were that far off from where we are now. I really don't. I, I, I don't. And I think it speaks more at more. Was on, Kane even that season? Was Kane even expected to help the big league team? Well, we had heard all. about him as a high school you drafted, heard about him. yeah. And and he came up. I believe he was 20 years old, and it was again like. Very shaky that first year, but you could see like, wow, like he's got a little something here. He also was throwing like 97 and that was back then. Uh, he had a really live arm and he was really young. He came up at 20, you know, it was, it was different than. Pitched in seven games that season, 46 innings, 
Matt Cain, in 2005. They're 75 and 87. 75 and 87. Now, if I do the splits on that team, because I remember very expectations. I don't think they were that high. We're like, boy, the Giants are cooked. I remember Sports Illustrated, matter of fact, when they used to come out with their baseball previews, had the Giants like finishing in fourth. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. I mean, people have the Giants finishing in fourth right now. He <laughs> like, I mean, you know, this is, this is one of the more loaded divisions, right? You got the Dodgers, the Padres, the Arizona Diamondbacks, who were good last year, look at the and then the Giants. So, like, look, look at what the Giants did in 2005. 12 and 11 in April, 11 and 16 in May, 10 and 17 in June, 12 and 15 in July. By that time, they were out of the race. They go 500 in August, 15 and 13 in September. They're not a good baseball team. They're, they're, I mean, get it. I get it. Right now, they're 500. Right now, they're 500 for one game under 500. But with the way they spent and with the way they talked, the expectation is playoff or else. Playoffs or else. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just I, I, I just don't think this team could ill afford. I think they could ill afford to miss the playoffs. I don't care if there's a third wild card, fourth wild card, fifth wild card. They've got to do something here. They've got to do something. But, like, if you make the playoffs in what? Conforto opts out? Snell opts out? You hope Chapman that you, opts out? You, 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 you hope. lose your draft picks for signing Snell and Chapman? Well, like, I don't understand how making the playoffs is some grandiose achievement that carries over into more success I, next I, year. I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. And I haven't said that all season long. Like, I, I want to compete for something. I want to compete. To me, making the playoffs is not the end all be all. Well, with, with the payroll that you have, and the investments that you made into these players, whether it's Chapman, Solaire, Snell, whatever it is, I do expect big digs. I expect more than just a playoff, right? I expect you to make. 